Welcome back to Mathematics 1229. This video is about a new property of matrices, a property called the determinant of a matrix. A determinant is a quantity that will only be calculated for square matrices, so a matrix where the number of rows is equal to the number of columns. This is similar to matrix inverse. Every square matrix has a determinant. The notation we use for the determinant is det A, often with brackets around it like this. Determinant brackets A. The determinant is a number, but, and it's something like a fingerprint of a matrix or some element of the, of the personality that a matrix has. It doesn't, it doesn't say everything there is to say about a particular matrix. Uh, let's say matrix A, matrix B, even though they're different, they could have potentially the same determinant or they can have different determinants. So on its own, it is not enough to uniquely identify a matrix, but it is something that allows us to classify matrices depending on what we're trying to do with them. In particular, we would classify a, mat a matrix into two categories based on its determinant. A matrix that has a determinant of zero would go into one category, and a matrix that has a determinant that is not zero would go into another category. We'll see that there's a connection between the determinant being zero and the inverse not existing. There are many formulas and approaches for calculating determinants. We're going to learn a bunch of them. And the one that we use, or the one that is recommended that we use, will depend on the size of the matrix. For smaller matrices, like a one by, by a one by one matrix or a two by two matrix, and even for a three by three matrix, the determinant calculation is not that bad. As we get into larger and larger matrices, then the calculation gets a little bit scarier, and the other more advanced strategies become more attractive. Those of you who have taken any programming will recognize part of the process that we're doing here is something called for recursion. And if you don't know what recursion is and you haven't done programming before, don't start doing it now, reviewing it because of this. You don't need it. It's not going to help you. But it is a connection that you can make between this topic and, and that topic if you already are taking a course like that. And as we go through, especially in this section, we're going to learn methods that are not not initially the best method to use. We're going to learn, like, here's the introductory method, and then we'll learn shortcuts to that method. So don't don't freak out. Don't panic. It's, there's certain spots where this is going to look horrible, but it'll get better. Okay, but the start's okay. The, the, the beginning is very nice. Suppose that we have a square matrix of order 1. So a one by one matrix, which is just a single number. The determinant of that single number matrix is just going to be whatever that number is equal to. So for example, if the matrix is seven, the determinant of that matrix is seven. If the matrix is minus five, the determinant is minus five. If the matrix is zero, the determinant is zero. So there's very little to do for a one by one matrix if you ask for its determinant. What about a two by two? For a two by two matrix, the determinant is also very simple. Not that simple, but it's still very simple. So I'm gonna denote a two by two matrix A with entries A, B, so little a, little b in the first row, and little c, little d in the second row. The determinant will be A times D minus C times B. You can think of that as a down product so that's the A times B part minus the up product. That's the C times B part. So the down product minus the up product. So as a quick example, we'll do a bunch of two by twos. 
So the determinant of A is going to be the down product 1 times 2 minus the up product 1 times 1. So 2 minus 1, which is 1. Next one, determinant of B, will be the down product 2 times 3, 6, minus the up product 4 times 5, 20. So negative 14. For C, determinant of C is going to be the down product, negative 9, minus the up product, negative 25. And we're subtracting a negative number, so it turns into addition, negative 9 plus 25, which is positive 16. And then the last one, the determinant of D, if it just has letters in it, we'll just multiply the letters together, a down product, D11 times D22, minus the up product, D21 times D12. That's the best we can do if we don't know what those entries are. So it's very quick, and I'm just going to double check before I say it's easy. Make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Yep, okay, looks okay. You'll scream at me if I made any errors, right? You'll let me know. Now, what about larger matrices? At the beginning, we'll see that there's an approach for calculating the determinant of a large matrix that isn't very friendly, but then we'll learn friendlier methods. What we, what we will be required to do to use these less friendly methods at the beginning is to work with something called a submatrix, so that, and that will involve introducing some new notation. Like many things in mathematics, this notation is easily confused with related notation. Once we know how to construct submatrices, we will define the determinant of a big matrix in terms of determinants of certain submatrices of that big matrix. So first, what's what is a submatrix? A submatrix is a piece of a larger matrix. For any m by n matrix, so a matrix with m rows and n columns, so this does not have to be a square matrix, it can be a rectangular matrix, as long as m is greater than 1 and n is greater than 1, so it can't be a row or a column or a single element. The submatrix Aij is going to be a matrix that's one row smaller and one column smaller. So if the original was 4 by 5, the submatrix Aij will be three by four. Each dimension will be reduced by one. So Aij is created by deleting row i and column j. So if you want the submatrix A23, you delete row two, you delete column three, and then you write in the other numbers into, a, in, in, into the smaller matrix. The notation we'll use for a submatrix is a capital Aij. Notice that it's very similar to lowercase little Aij which refers to the entry of a matrix. This is the part that's easily confused. If you're asked for little aij, that's asking for an entry within the matrix, just a single number. If you're asked for capital aij, that's asking for a submatrix. And as indicated in the definition, to create a submatrix, we delete the indicated row, we delete the indicated column, and then we create a new matrix of the appropriate size that contains the, the surviving entries of that of that matrix. So here's a nice 3 by 3 matrix and we'll construct a few submatrices. The, the submatrix A11 is constructed by deleting row 1 column 1. So I'll, I've indicated those by crossing them out in red and then putting the surviving numbers 5, 6, 8, 9 into a new 2 by 2 matrix. We'd also talk about the entry little A11 being the number that was at the top left in row 1 column 1. So in this case, it was one. We could create a different submatrix. We could create the submatrix A32. So I'm going to make a copy of the of the entire matrix. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9. And then what we do is we cross out row 3, cross out column 2, and we write in a matrix of the surviving pieces. 1, 3, 4, 6. And it doesn't ask for this, but little a32 is the number that is in the middle of that x, the little hex. So the thing that's being crossed out is the 8, the number that's in row 3, column 2. We can find a submatrix for non-square matrices, even though it won't help us with our determinant calculations later, we can still define a submatrix for non-square matrices, so we'll do that as well. It's asking for these two matrices A and B to find A21 and B11. So A21, what I'll do is I'll cross out row two, I'll cross out column one, so A21 is going to be 2, 6. It'll be a column, column matrix of the surviving elements. Then B11, we cross out row 1, cross out column 1. B11 is just a single element. It's 4. So eliminate row two, eliminate column one, and for B11 that was eliminate row one, eliminate column one. Okay, next A11, A34. So for A11, we cross out row one, cross out column one. So A11 is gonna be five, or not five, what is it? six, seven, eight. Four, six, eight. Five, seven, nine. And then what's a34, A34, we cross out row 3, cross out column 4, and put the surviving pieces in a 3x3 three three matrix. It was originally 4x4, four four, a submatrix. We reduce one row, reduce one column. We get 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 3, 5, 7. And what do we do with them? Well, we're going to string a bunch of these things together, multiplied by constants, and then take the determinant of these, these matrix, these uh, submatrices, in, or in, in order to calculate the determinant of larger matrices. Part of that calculation for calculating the determinant with these submatrices will involve us keeping track of whether i and j are both even numbers, both odd numbers, or a mix of even and odd. We would say that our submatrix is a positive submatrix if i and j are both even or both odd, and we'll say that our submatrix is a negative submatrix if i and j are different in terms of their even and oddness. So if, if i is even and j is odd, or vice versa, if, one, if i is odd and j is even. What we will do as part of this determinant calculation is we'll take the submatrix, take its determinant, and then we'll multiply whatever that number is by negative one to the power of i plus j. So 
if i and j are both even, we'll have negative 1 to an even power, since an even number plus an even number gives you another even number, like 2 plus 6 gives you 8, which is even. 10 plus 12 gives you 22, which is even. It's also, negative 1 to the i plus j is also going to be equal to positive 1. I can't remember if I misspoke, but negative 1 to an even power is positive 1. So you get an even power of i and j are both even numbers, and you'll get and even i plus j if i and j are both odd numbers. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 5 is 8. Uh, 7 plus 9 is 16. You add two odd numbers together, you're always going to get an even number. But if i, is, if I and j are not both even or both odd, if one is odd and one is even, then when you add them together, you're, you're going to get an odd number. So you'll be multiplied by negative 1 to the power of an odd number, which is negative 1 to, like, let's say, power 3 or power 5, which is going to be negative 1. So you can keep this in the back of your mind. Negative 1 to an odd power, always negative 1. Negative 1 to an even power, always positive 1. And there's some examples there. Okay. So we're... we're just building up some vocabulary, we're building up some new definitions, and now here's another definition we're throwing in. So we're starting with a matrix A that's square, but it has to have order larger than one, so a two by two or a three by three or a four by four, and so on. We've already defined the submatrix A, I, and J to be the, the matrix that's created by deleting row I and column J. New definition on one of the new definitions on this slide is the ij minor of a, which is called mij, is given by the determinant of the submatrix aij. So a minor is just a determinant of a submatrix. If you want the 2, 3 minor of a matrix, you first find the submatrix and then take its determinant. The, the other new definition for the slide is the cofactor. Cofactors given by negative 1 to the power of i plus j multiplied by that same determinant, the, the determinant of the submatrix. You can rewrite the definition of a cofactor as negative 1 to the i plus j multiplied by the minor. The only difference between a minor and a cofactor is the minor does not have negative 1 to the i plus j, and the cofactor does. So when I talk about whether or not a matrix or a submatrix is positive or negative, it's referring to the calculation of the corresponding cofactor, not the minor. We'll next do some sample calculations of creating minors and cofactors. Our process for doing this will be told which which minor or which cofactor we want it to calculate. That will tell us which column, which row to delete when we create our submatrix in the first step. Then we create or find rather the determinant of that submatrix. If we want the minor, then we're done. If we want the cofactor, then after we take the determinant, we multiply that minor by negative 1 to the power of i plus j. If i plus j is even, we'll just be multiplying by 1. If i plus j is odd, will be multiplied by negative 1. That's the, the net outcome of that calculation. So let's do a 3x3 three three example. Let's find a bunch of minors and cofactors. For m11. So I'm going to make a copy of the matrix. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, and then for M11, we're going to delete row 1, column 1. So A11 is equal to 5, 6, 8, 9. Then M11 is equal to the determinant of A11 which is a down product minus an up product. So 5 times 9 minus 8 times 6. 
So 45 minus 48, we get negative 3 as our answer. Now we'll do the next one. For M23, so make a copy of the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then I'm going to delete row 2. I'm going to delete column 3. So A23 is now going to be 1, 2, 7, 8. Then M23 is the determinant of A23. So we take the determinant of that matrix down product minus up product. 1 times 8 minus 2 times 7. So 8 minus 14, negative 6. Okay, now the next one, we want C23. Well, C23 is equal to negative one to the two plus three times the determinant of A23. And we already found that, we found it was negative six. So we have negative one to the power of five times negative six. Negative one to an odd power is gonna be negative one. So negative one times negative six and we get positive 6. So I'll put 4C23. Okay, and now we have one more, one more calculation. For C31, make a copy of the matrix, 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And for C31, we're getting rid of row three, and we're getting rid of column one. So A31 was equal, is equal to two, three, five, six. Then C31 is negative 1 to the power of 3 plus 1 times the determinant of a3 and 1. So negative 1 to the power of 4 times 2 times 6, 12, minus 5 times 3, 15. One, negative 1 to the power of 4, negative 1 to an even power is going to be positive 1. So positive one times negative three. Well, I've got to be careful not to use square brackets. So we get negative three as our final answer. And I'll circle all these in red. Okay, that's it. We'll continue in the next video.